Josh Allen, have a great year. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate you. Oh, for NBC Sports, Bills Campus, Peter King. Nice answer to that. <laughs> Real nice one. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. I had to get a bougie. Yes. I know. I'll get one more of those, man. Just one more. <laughs> one more handshake from you. <laughs> Doing the handshake up there? <laughs> you saw it. Oh, man, I see everything. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, the extensive Peter King training camp uh, tour and great viral moment with the. You were so focused on your job. I got no problem with that. You were focused on ending the interview, throwing it to break, and you didn't notice that Josh Allen had the handout. I thought it was perfect. Yeah, and you know what? I got to hand it to Josh Allen for being a great sport because, you know, it, when you look at it like this, you say, oh, my God, Peter is just dissing Josh Allen, when in reality, I just never saw it. And But the funniest thing was when I went to Kansas City, I could tell that Mahomes really wanted to do something about that because he thought it was the funniest thing he had seen, you know? And so at the end of it, he goes in for the second handshake and he won't let it go. <laughs> so anyway, I think that he probably texted that to Josh Allen and they had a, a pretty good time. I think that, look, those two guys have a great relationship, but it's also a relationship that is, that they like to zing each other quite a bit. Oh, and, and those guys have never changed. All the success they've enjoyed, they're still the guys they were coming out of college. They're friendly. Yeah. They're very generous with their time. They, they have great personalities. They don't big time anybody. They, they are regular human beings, and that is yes. refreshing. At the other yeah. end of the spectrum is Tom Brady. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry>. um, <laughs> I didn't see a photograph of or a video of Tom Brady shaking your hand. Uh, you were in Tampa. No. I, 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 I never I got don't... him. Hey, Mike, here, here's, the, here's the interesting thing about Tampa. This was the first year in a long time where I was told uh, Brady's not doing any one-on-ones this year. So I never saw him. And in fact, the day I was there, he had a Veterans Day along with Julio Jones and four or five other guys who he, he wasn't even on the practice field. So I went to Tampa for 24 hours and I never saw Tom Brady. Well, there were 11 days where nobody saw Tom Brady. That's one of the yeah. great unsolved mysteries of the NFL's training camp. And everything about this guy is unprecedented. Now, everything that happens is new territory. He's 45. He still plays at a high level. Do you think it continues this year for the Bucs based upon what you saw, that they've got a pretty damn good team? And do you think this is it for Brady, that he won't play for anyone, whether the Bucs or another team in 2023? Mike, if I had to guess right now, this is going to be it. But I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. I think the biggest thing right now is when you watch this team this year, they went from having a solid rock uh, offensive line in front of him to now, you know, look, they're going to probably have a rookie start at left guard, Luke, Luke Godeke. They're going to have a guy who Bill Belichick was fine getting rid of, Shaq Mason starting at right guard. And they're going to have a guy who never has started a game at center in his life, Robert Hainsey who, by the way, is at a very good camp, but he's banged up a little now, uh, starting at center. And you've got a guy at right tackle, Tristan Wirfs, maybe the best right tackle in football, who's nursing an oblique injury. So you've gone from having basically a really, really good interior of Ryan Jensen, uh, Alex Kappa, and Ali Marpet. They, they're all gone. And now it's rookie, guy who's never started before, guy you got in trade. And a guy over here who may not be 100%. That is what I worry about with Tom Brady. And, and I agree with you. The defense is very good. 
that offensive line is going to be potentially leaky. And it all comes down to Brady making those decisions before he even has the ball as to who's going to be open and getting rid of the football before he finds himself in a delicate position. The arm is still there. Someone told me this five years ago. The arm will be there for years to come. The legs are the issue, and when he can no longer get away from pressure, if he starts getting hit, he's going to get hurt, and he's eventually going to say, I'm getting too old for this crap, and he's going to be done. And I think that this will be his last year at this point, but I agree with you. Nobody knows, I think including him, nobody knows what's going to happen come 2023. We know that Devontae Adams is gone from the Green Bay Packers. Who do you think emerges as the favorite target for Aaron Rodgers post-Devontae? I think it could take a while, but... The day I was there, Mike, Aaron Rodgers was drilling holes through Aaron Dobbs, the fourth-round receiver from Nevada who, uh, along with the other young receivers there, was getting uh, some barbs thrown at them by Rodgers for not being ready, not knowing what they're doing. Here's the one thing that sticks with me, two things that stick with me and why I'm hugely bullish on Aaron Dobbs. He made two or three catches that in the course of this practice had the defensive players, veterans, come up to him, tap him on the helmet, give him a little fist bump. They're trying to beat him. And now they're saying, hey, dude, you're good. You know, you're you're going to help us win. And there's one other thing about Dobbs. And there he is. There's one other thing about Dobbs. When I was talking to Matt LaFleur, he said something very interesting to me. He goes, Here's what is compelling to me about Dobbs. He's here every morning at whatever time, almost when I get there, 5.30, 5.45. He studies as much as any young player I've ever seen. So it's clear that Aaron Dobbs knows that this is his chance. This is his time. And I think he's going to get a lot of targets from Aaron Rodgers. Peter, one of my favorite uh experiences of all time was when I studied the great Shakespeare play Aaron and Juliet I don't know if you're familiar with it it's Romeo Dobbs <laughs> it's Romeo Dobbs I've yeah. just I've all right uh, oh, that's right Romeo Dobbs <laughs> um we're far out there Aaron uh so um I I think Alan Lazar's got a chance to be really good this year contract year one of the only young holdovers from last year a guy who can still, I think, get it done and maybe step right in. But it's going to be a challenge, just like with the Chiefs. You take away a guy who commands double coverage everywhere he goes, and now the defense can fully deploy to stop whoever is there. And and I think it's going to be a challenge for the Packers' offense and for Aaron Rodgers. But, you know, they've tolerated the drops that Romeo Dobbs had in the preseason because he's so damn good. And because he has the skills, you can't coach. You can coach a guy and you can rep a guy into holding on to the football. The stuff he can do by way of going up the touchdown pass you saw him catch against the Saints, that's just stuff that, that, that allows him to, to help fill the void created by the departure of Devontae Adams. How much better do you believe the Vikings offense will be this year with Kevin O'Connell as the head coach and not Mike Zimmer? I think... Honestly, Mike, I, I felt when I went to Vikings camp as much an air of, you know, the, that, that the pressure had been lifted off their shoulders. That, you know, as one person there said, it's been so negative here. And so whether that's true or not with Mike Zimmer, he had run his course there. And Rick Spielman, after seeing six of his draft choices from last year's draft get cut this week, you know, he had run his course there too. So I think you're going to see Kevin O'Connell come in this year. And Mike, I think the one thing about a new set of eyes looking at players, like the guy in their camp who was being featured hugely was K.J. Osborne. That's why I thought it was a little odd when I saw him trade for Jalen Rager this week because I left there thinking K.J. Osborne could get 100 targets this year. Uh, It would not surprise me at all. And, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. None of us know what's going to happen. But I think the weaponry that they have 
And now maybe who knows what they get out of Jalen Rager. But I think this is going to be a team where this offense and particularly this quarterback feels like it's a breath of fresh air with a more of a teacher in Kevin O'Connell uh, running the show. I, I wonder whether they would have traded for Rieger if BC Johnson hadn't torn an ACL last yeah. Saturday night in Denver because he was kind of number four behind Osborne, and that yeah. may be where Rieger settles in, but we'll see. And I agree with you. They needed a change. I They still have a lot of continuity in the roster, and Rick Spielman did a great job of building it, but it – it was a hell of an indictment to have that many of the draft picks from last year just flat out gone after uh, an off season and a training camp and a preseason with the new regime. The Rams, Super Bowl champions, obviously hanging the banner in six nights for the first game of the season. We haven't had a repeat Super Bowl champ since 0304 New England Patriots. I I just assume the Rams aren't going to win the Super Bowl again. There's going to be some degree of hangover. There's going to be some element of the rest of the league catching up to them. The only good news is so many great players have left the NFC for the AFC. It's actually going to be not all that difficult for the Rams to emerge as one of the best teams in the conference again. You know, I think they benefit by some of the mayhem in the NFC West. You know, because obviously you don't know what you're going to get out of the quarterback position with the Niners. There's all sorts of uncertainty in Arizona and Seattle is in a rebuilding mode. So this is a different year in that division than it has been in the past. The, the most significant thing from my day in Thousand Oaks, California, you know, I was really fortunate. They had left training camp, okay, and they were back at their home facility. And on the day that I was there, Sean McVay had a scrimmage. And in his scrimmage, my biggest question there is, what am I going to see out of Matthew Stafford? Mike, he threw, I bet, 70 balls that day. And his arm was fantastic. You say, my God, I, 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 I thought this guy was supposed to be having an elbow issue. And I talked to him. I mean, he was throwing great, really emphasizing connecting with Allen Robinson, you know, who they got from the bears in free agency. But the one thing afterwards, when I talked to Stafford, he goes, look, I managed this all last year. I had an issue last year, but I practiced every day. I got it done. And so he said, believe me, I am not worried about it at all. And, and look, I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see. But I think the reports of the demise of his arm have been greatly exaggerated. Well, we'll see how that goes for the Rams. Again, it starts on Thursday night. When we return, we're going to do a draft of the teams that we think have a chance at crashing the playoff party. They were out in 2021. We think they have a chance of being in in 2022. We'll do that on this Friday edition of PFT Live right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.